Um, with the dictation, there's still a lot of problems with eh, eh, just the letter E, which is KK, and then AE, which we write with E, the letter E plus a short I, right? Totina Doma, give me a little feedback. Oh, mm, I got it. Okay. <laughs> so, Dao San, eh, Hu Die, A, we call that digraph sometimes, eh. And just the letter E, which is the KK symbol for AE, which we should write with an E plus a, plus an I symbol, right? A short I. We still have trouble with those. Now, it's a in the xianxiang in Taiwan English. And I also teach a freshman English class for the College of Science. And they had the same troubles. And when they were reading, they kept saying accept for, accept, accept, instead of accept. And however much I corrected them, they just kept saying ah. And so, something worked today that I've never tried in 22 years of teaching. So I'm going to tell you now. Uh, let's just compare these two once we locate the chalk. Okay. Just these two words, bet and bat. In Taiwan English, they are often bat, bat, right? They sound the same with a. Ah. Usually, Taiwan students have no trouble with this. You get this right. Bat usually is not a problem at all. Bait is a problem. You'll say bet or bat instead of bait. And bet is a problem because you say bat. In other words, you say bat for just about everything. Or sometimes you say bet for this one. All right. This one is not a problem. Everybody, bat. All you have to do is open your mouth really wide. The a ah is the lowest front vowel we have in English. Everybody, bat. bat. You're beautiful. Absolutely no problem. So we've already fixed, we haven't fixed it. We've already, dis already established that part of it is not a problem. These two are problems. All right, what to do for bet? Watch my mouth, watch the difference. Bet, bat, bat, bet. Now, we've already talked about it before that with bat, our jaw goes down quite a bit, right? Because the tongue is low and we need to open our jaw to let the tongue down. But for bet, now just watch, and maybe from the side is better. Bat, bet. Bet. Is my jaw doing anything at all? Bet. Bet. Is it doing anything at all? All right. Everybody, just become a plaster cast. Just sort of fadai and say, bet. 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 Good. It happened. When I told them not to move their jaw at all, the whole class suddenly got it right. The whole class suddenly got it right, and that's the first time in 22 years that's ever happened. So what I'm saying is if you're having trouble with these two, open your mouth wide for ah, don't move for eh, bet, bet, but almost. You just move a little bit because you've got your lips coming apart for the B. Okay, everybody, bet. That's great. And this one's bait. bait. That sounds good now. Remember, it's like doing for how A, and then add an E for extra good measure. And then it will be long enough for English. Bait. bait. All right, those are good. Very good. And don't write just an E, because in English, we don't really have this phoneme. We don't have this, we only have this. All right, so don't use this, please. And also, another thing that Sophie noticed is oh, Alright, so please use O and don't use just an O. 
This is the one we want. In addition, okay, I'm going to go over a bunch of things that Sophie and I both discovered in your notes. Um, how do we say that? South or southern? What's the difference? Okay, a lot of you don't know the difference apparently. South America is Nan South America is Nan The U.S. South was a southern U.S. But don't say southern America. That sounds too much like South America. The southern U.S. or the U.S. South, but not South America. That's Nan so, the U.S. South is the way I would usually say it. The U.S. South, the U.S. South. Southern U.S., it's in the Southern U.S., Southern United States, all right? All right, and unstress, I often say de-stress. It's not distress, D-I-S-T-R-E-S-S, I'm very distressed. right? That's distress, but in this class, I don't use that so much. Nobody's distressed here. Ah, don't ching song. So it's D E S T R E S S. De stress means yuan de zhong yin ba diao. Okay? De stress, not distress. D E S T R E S S. De stress. You de stress the syllable if it's repeated, for example. And how do we write verses? How do we write it? V. Where does the dot go? Very good. Oh, I love my former f freshman English students. <laughs> it really makes a difference. You guys, you're blessed. All right. So, V S period. Don't put the period in between. That's a Taiwan habit. The media do it. Meiti hui kan dao. They're wrong. Okay, we don't do that. For abbreviations, we put the period at the end, even though it's in the middle that the letters are missing. It makes sense, it's logical, but it's not what we do. V, S, period, okay, for verses. And tell all your friends, because <laughs> they're not all in the class. How about parentheses? This is a book, all right. We want to put is in parentheses, Many, many of you don't do it just out of habit from Chinese, because in Chinese you don't need to do it. In English you do. Please remember that's important. This is really distracting for native speakers. It's not just me. My colleagues, uh, colleagues mention it too. All right, epiglottis. Is Epiglottis is Remember? Hui yin, got it? Epiglottis, hui yin. Shi dao zeme shuo. Esophagus. This two words are a bit similar, right? Because we've got, they look pretty Greek, and they're both from Greek. So, epiglottis, hui yin. Esophagus, shi dao. Clarify that in your mind and your notes, okay? I think that's about it. Okay, oh, and then one thing about syllables. A lot of you had trouble with the word employed. A lot of you wrote three syllables for employed, and it's just two. Dabbed, a lot of people wrote two. And if you're not familiar with the rule, please go online and then re-familiarize yourself with the rule about when ED adds an extra syllable, when it becomes T, when it becomes D. All right, we're going to have our little shao kao now, but this time it's not a dictation. Former students of mine will be at an advantage because it's quan zhong yin of fu he ming si. So my former students already know how to do it. And the first test, if you haven't done it before, you will probably get a low score. So don't be really freaked out about it when it happens, but learn from your mistakes. So this time is mainly to tell you how it works, and so next time you'll get a good score. All right. Again, it's 10 items, just like with the dictations. Leave enough space because these are going to be longer. 
what you're going to write is going to be longer than what we usually do. So leave enough space. This is going to be compound noun stress. Let's use our old reliable example, convenience store. And remember, it's not convenience store. It's convenience store, OK? So I'll show you how to do it in the example, and then I'm going to write the test items down. So what do we circle? Good. V is OK. V is OK and V is OK. Because we have something in English called ambisyllabicity. That means that the letter at the end or the sound at the end of a syllable or the beginning of a syllable overlaps with another syllable. So the N is both part of the second syllable. It's the end of the second syllable and also the beginning of the third syllable. So I don't really care about that as long as it is heli. You can't circle the I because that belongs to the next syllable. But the consonant in between often belongs to both syllables. Now, what else do we circle? You can see from my reaction, something's wrong. Every time they see my reaction, they go, oh, wait a minute. We've talked about the rules of compound noun stress. Is that right? What are the rules? If we have a noun that modifies another noun, the second noun that is modified is not stressed. That's the rule. Therefore, what else do we circle here? Nothing. Convenience store. Convenience store. Nothing else is circled. Veen is the only stress that we have in this compound. Uh, we have to do one more thing, and that is marking tonic stress. We've also discussed tonic stress. That's the final stress in an utterance. I'm going to the convenience store. So this one you should be able to get completely right. In every compound, put a star in front of the last stressed syllable. Everybody write it down so you know how to do it. Put down the example. So convenience store. Let's give you another example with more than one stress. For example, this is example A, this is example B. All right, what do we circle here? What do we circle here? Spell it out in letters so I know how far to go. This is OK, and this is OK. Both are OK. Cloudy, because really we divide it after the vowel. But morphologically, that's what the dictionary will give you. So both of these are fine. And in theory, you can also say cloudy, but it's kind of weird. Cloudy is more normal. All right, cloudy, circle C-L-O-U or C-L-O-U-D. And then how about, what else do we circle? Uh, S, K, the whole thing. And what do we do next? Put an asterisk right here, OK? Cloudy skies. So is everybody clear now how to do this? This is what you need to do for all 10 items. So get ready to copy them. I'm not going to be reading them. I'm just going to write them. You copy them. If you cannot see clearly, you are welcome to come closer to the board so you can copy. OK? We're starting. Can everybody see? If you can't, please come up to the front where you can see more clearly and copy. So I'm just going to leave you alone for a while. Who is not finished now? Raise your hand. If you're not finished, OK? Finish up. We're going to put the answers on the board. Should be pretty fast. All you have to do is circle and add asterisks. Just put the answers on the board, please. All 
All right, those of you who put answers on the board, also exchange papers, please. Make sure that you've exchanged a paper with somebody. Use a red pen, please, to mark. And 10 points per item, no half points given. So either everything is right or everything is wrong. 10 points for each one. It has to be perfect in order to get the 10 points, otherwise zero points. So a lot of you, if this is your first time, you are not a former student of mine, you probably will have a low score, but it's okay. The first two or three times, scores are pretty low. By the fourth time, most people have mastered it, so we're okay. Um, all right, number one, is it correct? Everybody's exchanged papers, right? Is number one correct? Is urban a noun or what is it? If it were a noun, it probably would be correct, but it's an adjective, that's right. Okay, so what should it be? Urban area. If you put the R in, it's okay, but no E. And if you put the B in in here, that's also okay, because that's actually part of the root. So U R, U R B are both okay, A, A R both okay, and you must have an asterisk here. Urban area, urban area. All clear? Number two, is this correct? Yes, it is. And what's really impressive is she didn't just circle string. She circled this, the whole word, which is necessary because the whole word, what, only has one syllable. That's why. So we circled the whole word. If the person's, person whose paper you have circled only part of it, like S-T-R-I, or S-T-R-I-N-G, it's wrong. The E-D has to be in there. The whole word must be circled. So for future reference, if a word has only one syllable, you have to circle the whole thing. Instrument is correct. String with E-D. Remember that 分子,不管是现在分子或者过去分子,都是什么性质,是名词还是形容词的性质? Participles are kinds of adjectives. Participle, 分子是属于形容词类型的。那动名词呢? For example, the reciting of the poem. Is that a participle or is that a gerund? That's a gerund, because So. If it's got ing, you have to decide, is it a participle or is it a gerund? If it's a gerund, it's a noun. If it's a part of participle, it's an adjective. So, uh, stringed ed, 加有 ed, 那就是一个形容词. Instrument, if you put an s in there, that's okay. Instrument, instrument, 都可以. But inst, 太过分了,不行. 那t不行, t以后不可以. All right, how do we say this, number three? Is it correct? Yes, it is. Paper, P-A, and it also has the tonic stress. If you have P in there, it's not so good, but it's okay. Paper, it's not, not natural, but it's possible. And then four, everybody read it. Ah, I heard a wrong stress. Say it again, carefully. Actually, this is the right answer, so just follow the right answer. Try it again. Can opener. I heard somebody say can opener, right? That's wrong. Because it's a noun and another noun. 后面的那个名词是没有重音, so don't say can opener. It's a can opener. Can opener. Let's try it again. Can opener. Can opener. Mm -hmm. And then watch the end. Don't say can opener. Can opener. If you link, we won't have problems. You can link the end to the next word because it starts with a vowel. Can opener. That sounds really natural. That sounded really good. All right. Five. Go ahead and read it. Okay, don't say error. Remember what I just told you about it. Shao, don't. Error. 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 Good. Serious error. If you only circled SE, that's fine. The other R really shouldn't be circled because of error, because with double letters, we usually break it in the middle. But if you did, and if it's just E, but ER is the best. So ER. As you do these quizzes, you will get a feel for where we prefer having our syllables divided. Serious error. That's just an adjective plus a noun. Six, everybody read. Beautiful. And what is that? 
海滩海滩用的那个大浴巾。OK， beach towel is correct. Beach has how many syllables? So we circle the whole word. Beach towel is correct. All right, seven. Read. Good. S H A would be my preference. Shadow. That's the way I say it. Shadow instead of shadow. Shadow is more natural, but it's okay. It doesn't really matter. Shadow, boxing. Boxing here is what kind of a word? It's a it's a gerund. It's a 名词 It's a 动名词 We're using it、uh, as a noun. All right, eight. Read it. You read it correctly, but what's wrong here? How many syllables in joke? One. So this is wrong. Almost right, but not right. Because we have to circle the whole word, it has only one syllable. Let's try reading it again. Silly joke. Silly joke. Silly joke. Okay. All right. Number nine. All right. I can accept restaurant is okay. I prefer R E S. Rest. I, if you have a T, I can accept it too. I like this one the best. Restaurant. Restaurant. That's more natural for me. And. Should we circle anything in manager? No, it's a noun plus a noun. Once more, everybody, restaurant manager. Restaurant manager. Watch the T here. There's a stop. Restaurant manager. Run. 肚子会紧紧的 Restaurant. 别气，肚子会紧紧的 Restaurant manager. Restaurant manager. Restaurant manager. Good. Last one, everybody. Sticky. All right. Sticky. If you circled C K. But I don't like you breaking between the CK because that's a digraph. CK is just one sound, k. So I don't want you to break it between the C and the K. STI is okay. STICK is okay. If you divided it here, it's okay because this NG has different sounds on each in each syllable. So fing and then gers. So we really need this G for this syllable, but we also need it here. So either way is fine with me. 有没有鸡？因为鸡是属于两边的，在两边有不同的音。All right, each item is ten points, and please give that paper that you have a percentage score. One wrong, ninety percent, etc. Okay? Any questions? Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. First of all, in these early quizzes, I'm not going to give you nanti like that. I'm not going to give you a lot of exceptions. And beach, it's something that we use on the beach. It is not really like world leader. 它是整个世界的领袖，关系很密切。这个只是那个海滩上会铺的一一一个毯子而已。So first of all. If there are going to be difficult ones, I'll warn you at the beginning of the test. But that was good thinking. You're a former student, and you've learned this stuff before. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I see what you mean.、Um, you'll have to learn those separately. 那个例外先不要管 In the future, I will tell you. The next time we're going to include materials, 材料的话，后面是有重音的 So, a paper folder 是直做的一个夹子，可是 Paper clip 呢 ？Clip 那夹子是不是直做的？不是。So that one, we'll we'll work on that one for next time. Karen had good questions, but those are harder ones, and a lot of even advanced ESL books they won't tell you this stuff in such detail. But I will warn you if there are complicated ones like that. 可是通常是一个组织一个比较大一点的单位。Okay, any other questions? Usually, what? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Either one is okay, but the way I say it is STI sticky. His hands are sticky, sticky. But if I say sticky, it's okay. Both are okay. We call that, as I mentioned earlier, it's called ambisyllabicity. Amba means both. Like am ambidextrous is 双手都一样，厉害可以写字啊。不管右手左手都能写字。That's ambidextrous. Amba 是双 both 的意思。Ambisyllabicity 就表示说，这个音节的
，那个尾巴，那个音，一样属于下个音节的开头。That's ambisyllabicity. So for like、um, paper, paper, 这个 p 也是属于这里，也可以说是属于这里。With p, it's not so convincing, but with sounds like l, melon, melon. 它有两个 l 的感觉。So we say we have ambisyllabicity here of that sound. Ambisyllabicity. 就是说，一个音在音节尾，它也是属于这个音节，也是属于下个音节，是下个音节的开头。Okay, 可以吗 ？Any other questions? Yeah. Oh, what is shadow boxing? Actually, I'll give you an example. One way they translate Tai Chi Quan is Chinese shadow boxing. Shadow boxing means doing exercises of boxing with yourself. You 好像跟自己的影子在打拳 That's shadow boxing. Anything else? Okay. Usually, what happened in the past is I'd get a lot of students protesting, trying to win extra points. 哎，可是老师这样也可以吧 But I'm not getting so many this time. That's good. If if you've graded the paper and if you've asked all your questions, hand them to the front row, please. We're on page 16. We got to glottal stops, and glottal stop in Chinese again is 喉塞音 right? And what is the glottis again? What is the definition of the glottis? Is it a is it a piece of flesh? What is it? The glottis is the space between the vocal folds. 声带有两片。它那个中间的空间，那个缺口，那个是 glottis. That's the definition of glottis. It's a space between the vocal folds. So actually, it's air. The glottis is air. It's a space between the vocal folds. The glottis. So we talk about an open glottis or a closed glottis. 用起来感觉还好像是一个气管一样 But that's what it means. And a glottal stop is what? How do we produce a glottal stop? It's an opening, closing, or a closing and an opening. You can put it that way; it's more accurate. It's a closing and opening of the glottis. 一次声带合起来马上敞开，所以合起来一次马上开。That's a glottal stop. Uh, Or you open them and close them. However you want to look at it, 它是开一开合一次就对了。后面不一定要马上开。So for example, if I say, 憋，我还在憋气，那边还是封闭的状态，所以后面可以很久不要开了。So. Uh, in that case, it's probably better to say it's a closing of the glottis, but very often it opens right away again. Okay, our reader,、um, good, and our camera is ready. And go ahead. I'm Doris. Good. To summarize, the consonant we have been discussing so far may be described in terms of five factors. First, state of the vocal folds. Let's slow down because these. This is a summary, right? And when you get to a summary, they're pulling out the main points. This is 重点 So pay special attention whenever you come to a summary, because although, as I told you, every single sentence in Latin folklore is important, every bit of every sentence is important. This is just sort of like the bounty of what we just talked about. The state of the vocal folds. When you see that, you may not think of voiced, voiceless, right? 你可能想不到 But that's what it's talking about. Whether it's voiced or whether it's voiceless, 我们要用个一个名词来呃给它呃起个名字的话，它就称作 state of the vocal folds， 指的是有声还是无声，带音不带音。Is it voiced or is it voiceless? That's the state of the vocal folds. 声带的状态如何？敞开的吗？还是在并在并拢，然后一直在震动？ That's this question. There are other states of the glottis. We learn about them in chapter six, but for now we only need to worry about voiced and voiceless. Number two, go ahead. 
Number two, place of articulation. All right, quickly, starting from front and going back and down, let's name the ones that we know. Shuangchun. What is it? We don't call them lips when we're talking about place of articulation. By labia, we want to make 形容词. I should have made it clearer. Let's give me an adjective, please. So, 双唇. Mm hmm. 时间. Mm hmm. 齿音. And you also call it 时间. Right. And last time I told you, 恶. 恶化 is the word for palatalized. So, 恶音 in Chinese. You often call it, um, 舌面音. 传统的讲法是舌面音, because in Chinese you like to talk about what part of the tongue is touching something. So, it depends on whether you want to refer to the passive or to the active articulator. The passive articulator is 恶音. The passive artic, uh, the active articulator is 舌, 舌面音, 舌面音. And that is what in English? Palatal. And what's our one palatal sound? Y. That's the only one we've learned is y. All right? And then we have rang e or shi ho yin, velar. And then we haven't learned xiao she. We don't need it for English usually. Actually, we do have xiao she songs in English, but they're usually dialectical. There's some people, like some of my L's are probably probably uvular. The adjective, everybody, is uvular. Uvular. Mm-hmm. Okay, and zhuan shi yin. Retroflex, we can also call it chao shi yin. We can also call it yin ho yin, chi yin ho yin. So behind the alveolar ridge. And um, we can also use shi ye yin in Chinese for palato alveolar. Ye ke yi si yin e yin. 齿音的音,上颚的颚,音颚音 in Chinese, palato-alveolar. Or you can say 舌叶音, you're talking about the blade of the tongue. That's less precise though. The English is palato-alveolar. And if we reverse them, it's the same general area, but it's a different set of sounds. If we say alveolopalatal, I gave you examples of alveolopalatal sounds in Mandarin. What are they? Chi good. That's great because we're going to be learning how to write Chinese and IPA very, very soon. So you've already got a head start. Um, for retroflex, remember the definition is the tongue curls, so the bottom surface of the tip of the tongue approaches or touches the soft, the, the hard palate. Okay? So you Okay? And that covered them all. Then we're going to talk about what? What's next? Go ahead. Three. Number three. Central or lateral articulation. Okay. I have to flip back to the page here. Central or lateral articulation. There's only one sound that we have to worry about when we're talking about number three. And normally when we're talking about if a sound is central or lateral, if it's central, do we bother mentioning it? If it's a central sound, for example, d. Hmm. Well, m is not a good example, but d. The tongue is touching the middle part, and then the air comes over the middle part of the tongue. D. Or n. Those are all central articulations. But if a sound is a central articulation, do we bother mentioning it? No, we only mention it, we, what do we only mention? The second one, the second choice is lateral, lateral. And that only concerns one sound, which is l, that's right. And that's classified as what, what place of articulation and what manner? Lateral, we've already said, and the manner of articulation is approximate, approximate, 接近音, 考试会考这些东西, so make sure you memorize that. Laterals are all approximants, at least the ones we're working with. 舌尖是有碰到没有错, 可是空气从两边或者从一边, 那个往外流, 那个就是一个 lateral, approximant. Let's move on for number four, what do we have? 
Number four, soft palate raised to form a velic closure. Velic. Velic closure. Oral sounds. Not oral. 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 Not o. Don't say o. Just say or. Or. Yeah. Oral. That's oral. Oral sounds. That's good. Or lowered nasal sounds. Okay, in number four, oh, I remembered what I want to say about number three. In Chinese, remember it's called bian yin. Somebody said, can we say ce yin? We don't say ce yin. We only say bian yin that I know of. Uh, number four, soft palate. Some, whatever concerns the soft palate, when we're talking about that, we're not talking about k and g. Those are velar sounds. We're talking about velic closure, not velar uh, approximation or velar contact. We're talking about velic closure. We're only talking about what class of sounds in that case? What? Louder? Nasals. That's right. Nasals, bi yin. I think it's about what bi yin. Also, bi hua yin, but we haven't talked about those yet. You don't need that yet. So, nasals. If, and some of you got this wrong in your notes, if the velum is open, is it raised or lowered? It's lowered. If it's lowered and open, then we get nasal sounds. If we want oral sounds, what do we do with the velum? Raise it. And we all can, also can say it's closed, a closed velum. All right, so make sure those two are clear. Xia qu de hua, just a kai na, just a bi yin. And five? Number five, manner of articulatory action. Okay, that's kind of British. We don't say articulatory. Where's the stress? Second syllable, articulatory. Everybody, I'm sorry, we have to practice it seven times. Go, articulatory, go. Okay, the phonetics we're learning now is called articulatory phonetics. Everyone? Articulatory phonetics. Please don't mix, mess up that word. Articulatory. My experience in the past is and I know that this is a lot of new stuff. You have a lot of things to think about. But try to organize it so you can review things that we often get wrong, like pronunciations of common words, like phonetician articulatory, uh, glottal stop, etc. And, okay, we're almost finished. I'd like to finish before the break. Okay, so let's do the next two paragraphs before we take our break. Go ahead, next. Thus, the consonant at the beginning of the word at the Oh, that's the other thing I wanted to tell you. First of all, five. Don't say five. It's five. five. That's pretty good. All right, and watch out for at the. Buzi at the. At the. Okay? At the. Mm -hmm. Uh, at the beginning of the word sing is a first voiceless. All right, we're talking about s so the state of the vocal folds is everybody? Voiceless. Remember state of the vocal folds is a question. Is it voiced or is it voiceless? So the first sound in the word sing is a s. What is the state of the vocal folds? Voiceless. voiceless. Good. Two? Uh, Alveolar. Alveolar because the tip of the tongue is very, very close to the alveolar ridge. And that's the first one is state of the vocal folds. Two, go back and look. You'll see it's the place of articulation. Good. Three. Central. Central. Do we need to bother mentioning central normally? No, we only will bother when a sound is a lateral. And for now, it's only one sound, L. And? Oral. Do we normally mention oral? No. The only time that we think about this is when a sound is a nasal. So oral and central. If we want to be really, really detailed, we can mention them, but normally we don't. And? Five. Fricative. And the consonant at the end of thing. Okay. Fricative is what? In Chinese? Tying. And for five, we're talking about the manner of articulation. Good. And go ahead. At the end of sing is a one, voiced. All right, so mm, nasals are all voiced. The nasals and approximants are all voiced. So if you're hesitating, that's an easy way to remember a bunch of them. And? Two, velar. Mm -hmm. Three. Velar, ng, shoho, pong, dao, rang, uh. And? Three, 
central. All right, it's not an L. And? For nasal. This one's nasal. We don't say nasal stop. We're just going to say nasal and? Five stop. All right, we call it a stop, but normally we won't say number five. We have one paragraph left. I think we can wrap it up quick. Next reader, please. My name is Justine. Okay. On most occasions, it is not necessary to state all five points. All right, not necessary. Don't say non necessary. Not necessary. Try it again. Remember, PTK right? Not necessary. I'm not exaggerating. Not necessary. Try it again. It is not necessary yes. to state all five points. Good. Unless a specific statement to the contrary is made, consonants are usually presumed to be central, not labial. Not labial. Not, oh, not lateral. Okay, that T is not seen. Your stop at stops to start to pay Not lateral. Not lateral. Mm -hmm. Or oral <coughs> rather than nasal. Not or. Come on. And oral rather than nasal. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's what I just said. So, we don't say oral. You don't say central. Nasal is not going to stop. Okay? Consequently, points three and four may often be left out. Left out? Be left out. Mm -hmm. So the consonant at the beginning of sing is simply called a voiceless alveolar fricative. Mm -hmm. When describing nasals, point four has to be specifically mentioned and point five can be left out. Left out. Left out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the consonant at the end of sing is simply called a voiced velar nasal. Called. Called. Yeah, cold is very long. It's not that bad today, right? So called. And all right, so let's make sure you understood all that. Points three and four can be left out of s. We don't have to mention that it's central. We don't have to mention that it's oral for s. And then for ng, uh, oh, sorry, we didn't get to that. We can simply call it a voiceless alveolar fricative. So, voiceless alveolar fricative. So, state of the vocal folds, place of articulation, manner of articulation. Voiceless alveolar fricative. And then, for nasals, we must mention point four, but not five. So, that, what are we going to call the ng sound? It's a the last three words of the paragraph, voiced, velar, nasal, voiced, velar, nasal. Take about a seven minute break, don't stay out too long, so try to come back about 2.32, how about how, 2.32, we're going to start up again. Okay, just a couple of things from the break, there's a lot of interesting stuff going on in, during the break, but we don't have time to talk about it all. One thing is we were talking about a discussion now going on on the NTU Phonetics Facebook group. That's a really great group. I'm so impressed. We already have, like I said, high profile linguists, these on the list. And they are contributing. Some of them are in other countries, like in England and the US. Some of them are local people who are really interested in languages. Each one has a lot to contribute, and I think we're very lucky. We now have well over 200 people, now by Doren, including a lot of former phonetic students. So it's a very, very rich environment that we have there to discuss things. So please, uh, please go ahead and post anything that comes to mind. Jamie had a really interesting post about That's right, and what is that called? It's called Tourette's syndrome. Tourette's syndrome. Check, I don't want to write it now. Oh, not a shit, because I have to keep carrying this thing around. So, Tourette's syndrome. Go to Facebook, you will see it. T. Kai told it. Jamie's post about Tourette's syndrome. It's when you have an irresistible urge to keep doing something. Often it's a dong zuo. You have to look at me now. It's a tick, something like this. Something like that. We call it a tick, T I C. In Tourette's syndrome, you often have a language tick. That means you have a certain word, you keep repeating it over and over again. Biscuit, when you're just saying something biscuit normal, you keep biscuit saying the word biscuit, and there's no really biscuit reason for saying the word biscuit. That's if you saw the video. So that's a kind of Tourette's syndrome. Another kind is where you say a lot of tsuhua. Yeah, all of the signs of jing will come out. And sometimes the person, 
and they can't help it. It's a, it's a definite condition. It's a now. Now, So that was an interesting post. And there was another interesting post from Jerome about nasalization. For example, in Mandarin, sometimes you'll say, oh, wow, how pao. How pao. Is that right? Now, pa, should that be nasalized? Well, how high pa, nigga pa. Inga yo bi ma? All right, what Jerome mentioned, have the rest of you noticed? Yo so tsuna yo zika fa yin ma? Oh, how pa. Tingua ma? Yeah, that was a really excellent observation. Wa xi wang ni men mei ge ren do shi ping chang ke shou ji dao zhe yang zi de guan cha. Please do it. I mean, in the past, before you learn phonetics, you might think it's an embarrassing mispronunciation. But now you know there's a reason for every single thing that happens in the world of humans and the universe and nature. There's a reason for everything. And this one's quite consistent. It happens a lot. There's a reason for it. And I put in my answer that, in fact, something similar happens in English, and especially in British English, because, well, OK, I will share some, with, some of it with you now. and I can write a little bit less later. And that is American English is often very nasal. I have a nasal voice. The part of the country where I come from, my voice is quite nasal. I'm not really crazy about it, but I was born that way, OK? So <laughs> not a Lady Gaga fan, but I was born that way. I wasn't really born that way. I grew up that way. And that's true of most Americans, not all. I know some Americans who speak really dryly, no nasalization at all. Oh, <laughs> So we have a lot of nasalization in America. And if you listen to the news, you'll hear it all the time. Unnecessary nasalization all the time. Okay. That's American. In British English, they are not so nasal. They're drier. I call it drier because you're not using all those nasal resonances. But in British English, if you listen to the BBC, they will often use nasalization to emphasize a point. They'll say, billions of dollars have been spent on this project. They will use nasalization in British English. Now, this is a paper I wanted to write, but I don't have time to write all the papers I wanted to write. So if you want to, go ahead. But start listening to the BBC and listen for when the announcer suddenly uses nasalization. Almost always they are trying to emphasize something and sound authoritative. That's my conclusion. You could collect a great corpus. Guangxi on BBC na hen fang bian, ni bu ren shi ban ge ying guo ren ye mei guan xi. Ting BBC jiu gou le. And you can get it on the internet. OK, anything else before we move on? Oh, and there's a couple things that Sophie mentioned. And this one is also confusing. What symbol do we use before R and L? It's a kaiko O. So or. O. So don't say or. L is also often the same thing, all of the people, but we don't say all. In New York English, you do, but I don't in the Midwest. If you have an R or an L, we will learn later in the textbook, it usually cuts off the second part of a diphthong. Right? For example, law, draw, etc. Right? But if you put an R and L after this sound, so this one is all. Don't see much going on, right? All. Or, we don't say or, so we don't use the o. We're going to just use this o. It's not or, although some people say orange. I say orange, some say orange. But my point is, before r, this sound, so it's or. or. OK, any other questions before I move on? So Sophie just asked me about that. She marked it as a regular O in your notes. This is the explanation that I'm giving now to correct that, OK? Anything else? If not, make sure that you understood everything that we just finished in this section. So how we describe a sound. Go in this order. 
，而是而且是它的顺序。第一个是 voiced or voiceless. Next, okay, voiceless, alveolar, central. We don't need usually unless it's an L. Then we only need four if it is nasal, and we do need five no matter what. Then we need, for example, stop, fricative, approximant, etc. Okay. That's it. We're going on to waveforms of consonants. Next reader, please. The waveforms of consonants at this stage. Okay, not at this. This is something all of you are going to have to train yourself on. 你只要看到词尾或音节尾有什么 p, t, k, b h, 肚子会紧紧的 That's what I tell my other classes. At If you just look at my tummy, you can see it. At, at, 看得到它在动吗 ？At 肌肉变紧了，今天的衣服穿的没有那么紧了。Okay, okay. At, 看得到吗 ？At, at, at. 肚子会紧，肌肉会紧。That's what you do at the end of a stop. P T K glottal stop. 后面都是 at. 别气。And then pause. There's a very long pause after PTK. BDG 后面的 pause 没有那么长 PTK 后面停很久 Even if it's a really, really insignificant function word, 即使是个很小的虚词 we still say at this stage. We don't say at this stage. Immediately, it sounds like Taiwan English. Immediately, 完全就是很快，就瞬间我就听得到，这不是 native speaker 的 And you don't need to do that. 你既然能学得对的话。那你为什么要坚持原来的 habit? Okay, 可是因为是 habit， 你要下点功夫。At this stage, everyone. At this stage. At this stage. Good. Don't say at this stage. At this stage. Go on. At this stage,、mm -hmm. we will not go to. 不是 not not. Not.、Mm -hmm. We will not go too deeply into the acu the the, the acoustics of consonants. Simply nothing of you. Simply, simply, nothing. Noting, N O T E 的 I N G 的形态 Noting.、Mm -hmm. Simply noting a few distinctive points about their waveforms. All right, now we're talking about waveforms. I told you to make waveforms of the sentences in the textbook, so you start to get a feel for it, and.、Um, Wendy, can you hold up your waveform so I can tell them what to get rid of? Okay, 上面那个黑黑的才对，下面那个把它消掉，那个打勾的地方把它关掉。We only want the top part. That's the waveform. 下面的 we're going to learn about that second semester. So he says that we're going to tell you a little bit about waveforms, but we're not going to go into the details of acoustics that second semester. It's a lot of stuff. It's a lot of physics, but there are some things that we can already. C from waveforms that are pretty simple. Go on. The places of articulation. Articu. Articulation, are not obvious. Not. Not. Was a nut. Not. Not. Mm-hmm. Are not obvious in any waveform, but the differences is some of the principal manners of articulation. Manners. Your your debut. Manners of articulation. Manners of articulation. Manners of articulation.、Mm -hmm. Stop, nasal, fricative, and approximant. Approximant. Approximant、mm -hmm. are usually apparent. 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 Apparent is don't be strong. Mine is apparent. Apparent. Ah,、uh, today. Furthermore, as already pointed out. You can also see the differences between voiced and voiceless sounds. So in this paragraph, he's giving you a quick introduction to waveforms. It's stuff that we've mentioned before,、um, but now we're formally looking at waveforms. So we'll go over it. First of all, what can you not see clearly in any waveform? There's something. No matter how li high you are, you can't see it clearly in a waveform. What is it? Louder. Place of articulation. The place of articulation cannot be seen from a waveform. You 光看这个声波，那个波形，你看不到发音的地方在哪里，发音位置是看不出来的。Put that in your notes. It's in the test. That's one way to get you writing.、Uh, writing, isn't it? Okay. 真的可能会考
you cannot find the place of articulation or can't determine the place of articulation just by looking at a waveform. But there are two things you can see fairly clearly, fairly reliably from a waveform or on a waveform. What are they, first of all? Place we can't see, but place we can't see clearly, but what, what can we see clearly? The manner and what, what do they list here for manner of articulation? Stops, nasals, fricatives, approximants. 大部分,你光是看 waveform, 你就可以判断到底是个stop. Or is it a nasal, or is it a fricative, or is it approximate? We can see all of those on the waveform. We can't say where it was made. We can't say it was an M or an N or an NG. We can't tell, but we know it's a nasal. Or we can say, mm, that's a stop. I know that's a stop. Or we can say, that's voiced, that's voiceless. That's very easy to see on a waveform. That's very clear. Voiced or voiceless is very clear on a waveform. All right, and uh, that's it. Next paragraph. Hume, the top half of figure 1.11 shows the waveform of the phrase, my two boys know how to fish, labeled roughly in ordinary spelling. The lower part shows the same waveform with labeled pointing out labels. The, with labels mm -hmm. pointing out the different manners of articulation. Different manners of articulation, yeah. Different mm -hmm. manners of articulation. No, I guess the way you read it was okay because we don't really have a contrast. Go on. The time scale at the bottom shows bottom, that bottom, not bottom. Oh, at, that's British. At the bottom. bottom. At the bottom. Ba, what's a bot? Ba, everyone, bottom. bottom. How do you say codes? It. <laughs> so many people mix them up. New code or codes. Button. Button. Bottom. 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 Don't mix them up. Okay. At the bottom. Bottom. Nicotine and tap your hala. Bottom. 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 Mm -hmm. Shows that this phrase took about two and a half seconds. Okay. So if you look right at the bottom, they have a scale here. That's the pass. It measures or it marks the passage of time. So the whole thing, you can see from zero, 0, 1.0, one second, 2.0, two seconds, and a half, 2.5 seconds for the whole thing. Um, and we've got regular spelling at the top. And then in the second waveform, we've written labels to show that this is a nasal, this is a vowel, closure, burst, vowel, etc. Those are things that we can see on a waveform, and we'll be label labeling those. Next reader, please. Phoebe, looking mainly at the label version in the lower part of the figure. Figure? Of the figure, you can see in the waveform where the lips open after the nasal consonants in mind, so that the amplitude gets larger for the vowel. All right, everybody look at the first word of the sentence and look at the waveform. And you all have it in your book, so I'm not going to be able to you know, show it to you. But right under M, you can see because nasals, so, mm, but then I is really loud. 下面是不是那个vowel的时候, waveform突然间变得那些线很高嘛, right? So, my, my, the I is long and voiced, M is voiced, but it's very tiny because it's a nasal. Okay, go on. The vowel is ended by the voice's stop consonant at the beginning of two. All right, my two, my two, just like when I was telling you, like, but, the 中间是不是很长的一个 pause? You can see it right here on the waveform. That's a long pause. 就是一条线,什么那个上下线都没有,那个黑线没有. So, my two, okay? Go on. For which there is a very short silence followed by a burst of noise as the stop, as the stop closure is released. So, my two. 它是迈到2那边那个时候会有一个,因为它不是词尾,词尾会那个pause很长, like for example that one. But here we've got my,是一个open syllable,加上t, 
my， 我已经开始，可是那个解除掉的时候，然后呢就会有爆炸。To my， 已经开始发 to， 可是在憋气。My to， OK， 所以那个是在憋气。对对 ，All right， 所以刚刚没有讲错。So my getting ready to。中间会停，因为准备念 stop 的时候，你就要憋气。All right, and then it have a burst, 爆炸，然后就是有 friction， 有摩擦。And then we move on to the vowel. Go on. This burst is why the oral stop consonants are called plosives in the international phonetic alphabet chart. The vowel in two is followed by the voice stop at the beginning of boys. The voicing for the stop makes this closure different from the one at the beginning of two, producing small voicing vibrations instead of a voicing vibrations. Voicing vibrations mm -hmm. instead of a, a a flat line. All right. When you have a flat line, you have silence. So when you see just a flat line, flatlining in another context means somebody's dead. He's flatlining, and that means nigga now poor is in mayola. But here, flatlining means there's no sound, but you're still alive. Don't worry. So, for a voiceless stop, we have no sound at all. No sound. My two. I'm getting ready to say two. Cause the nigga 当中，我在憋气的时候，什么声音都没有。It's a voiceless stop. But now we're getting ready to say a voice stop, and it's different. Because before I release the stop, I am voicing it. So.、Uh, I think I will get the microphone here so everyone can hear it. My two boys, but two boys, two boys, two boys. In way, remember I told you that if it's at the beginning of an utterance, like boy oh boy, I don't have to say boy oh boy. I don't have to voice it. Boy oh boy. 什么 voicing 都没有，直到母音才有 voicing. But if the sound before it is voiced, then we often voice it. So to 已经有 voicing. To 马上紧接着是一个 voice stop 的话 ，voicing 会持续。可是是不是被堵住了？无双唇的那个色音，气流被堵住。Is that right? 气流是被堵住了，可是这边会继续发声，会继续 voicing. So my two boys, my two boys. That's what you see here, right under the B, where he wrote B. You can see, 那个蛮粗的，就是比较多的那个线，是不是那黑线一堆？不像那个 my two 当中的那个 flat line， 它是有有线，对不对？那个就是 u、嗯。That's what that sound is. u、嗯。My two boys. Everyone clear on that? That's voicing. Go on. After the vowel in boys, there is a fricative with a more nearly random waveform wave form pattern. Though there are some voicing vibration, voicing vibrations intermingled with the voice. All right. Here we're learning important things about waveforms. When we have regular vibrations, look at the vowel in boy. Can you see these straight lines? 然后它比较细的部分，不是中间特别黑吗？外面就开始比较细，一条一条的线看得出来。Is that right? 上面跟下面是不是有很多细线？间隔很均匀。间隔均匀 means voicing. 你看到那个细线的间隔均匀 ，that's voicing. But what do we do when we get to z? In Taiwan English, you probably don't voice it at all. You probably say my voice, right? My voice. But we do voice it, especially if the next sound is voiced. So it's boys. Now, do we have voicing? Yes. So therefore, we should have evenly spaced lines, right? Is that right? However, in addition to voicing, we've got something else going on with z. It's not like n.、Mm. We've got something else going on with z. What is it? What is it? Noise. That's it. Noise. 噪音有噪音 It's a fricative. 差音的话会产生噪音 Remember we talked about it earlier. 
So we have regular lines to show that we have voicing, but at the same time we have a big mess because we have noise. So noise and voicing, 两个都合在一起的时候就是这个样子。是 voicing 带 noise 都有。That's typical of this kind of sound. So z you'll see it. Evenly spaced lines plus random frequencies. Let's go on next paragraph. Um, I'm Kathy.、Mm -hmm. The waveform of the of the n in no is very like that of the of the n at the beginning of the utterance. It shows regular glottal pulses, but they are smaller, have less amplitude than those in the following vowel. All right. So just like with my n,、mm, we see regular. Least spaced lines, but then a big vowel. You can see how much louder the vowel is. Same thing again. Same structure. We have regularly spaced lines, but the amplitude, 上下的那个幅度，那个是振幅，那个就是声音大小，声音很小，闷闷的 ，because the mouth is closed. Air is coming through the nose, and a lot of the sound gets absorbed. So, mm, no, oh, this is a ho. So you turn and be in dala, but it's all voiced. So we've got evenly spaced lines all the way through. Come on. The That follows this vowel is very short, with hardly any voices interval. Interval. Interval.、Mm -hmm. After the vowel in how, there are some further very short actions. There is hardly any closure for the. All right. This is going fast, and he's and they're describing here what's happening on the waveform. So we have to go over everything. Oh, we took care of the vowel. The next sound is. Now. Is not even on some vowel, some consonant charts. 有的子音的那个图表，它根本没有写 h， because 它没有什么特别的发音点，它是跟了后面的母音来定位。For example, he， 它就是 palatal， ha， 那就是后面。So h， all h is is aspiration. h 没有别的，它不像中文的好 or 社会，它不是一个差音。它只是呼吸 ，nothing else. It's just aspiration. So we don't see very much for how. 那边没有太明显的任何东西，一点点，声音很小。And then we get the vowel, which is big again. And then we don't have much closure for two. Two 不像前面的 my two boys 那边那个停顿那么久。Why? Because it is. It's a function word, and we say it really fast. In an American English, it may be voiced. Now, 无论如何，它会很短，很很小的一个东西。So it's not going to be a big deal. How to fish? Here, how to fish? Here, tabusi ga tap, but it goes by fast. Okay, go on.、Um, and the vowel in two has only a few vocal fold pauses, making it much shorter than any of the other vowels in the sentence. Sentence. Sentence.、Mm -hmm. The fricative at the beginning of fish is a little less loud, has a slightly smaller amplitude than the fricative at the end of the word. All、That's、right, what they're saying here is two. 后面那个母音因为很短 often it's a schwa. How to fish? 很可能是个 schwa， 不是一个 how to fish. How to fish, and it's very very short. So you see only a few pulses. 每一条线那个间隔很均匀的那些细线，每一条线是那个 glottis 一开一合。So that's one opening and closing of the glottis, each line, and then fish is very, very quiet. This tiny is very small sound. It's quieter than what? Than than the sh at the end of the word. So fish, you can just hear it now with the microphone, right? Fish. The sh is much louder, isn't it? And you can see it in the waveform. Very good. Next section. I'm Jerome. Okay. The articulation of Artic vowel. Artic articulation. The articulation of vowel sounds. Mm-hmm. In the pr production of vowel sounds, the articulator do not come very close together, and the passage of the airstream is relative. Airstream. Of the airstream is relatively. Unobstructed. Remember that. That's the difference between vowels and consonants. With a vowel, the airstream is relatively unobstructed. 没有阻碍。子音的时候有某一种阻碍。That's the difference. Go on. We can describe vowel sounds roughly in terms of the position of the highest point of the tongue and the position of the lips. 
Now, remember when we're describing vowels, using an articulatory description is really difficult because it's hard to know exactly what your tongue is doing in your mouth, where it is. We can do it, and when we do it, we measure 舌头最高的一个点,它那个鼓起来,它鼓起来最高的一个点. Write it in your notes, it's the part that它翘起来最高的地方. The part of the tongue that sticks up the highest, that's the part that we measure, that we refer to. 所以舌头可能是前面翘起来,或者后面翘起来. That will form different vowels. So the part that sticks up the highest of the tongue. And in addition, what the lips are doing. Go on. As we will see oh, later, later. <coughs> figure 1.12 shows the articulatory position for the vowels in heat, hit, head, hat, father, good, foot. Food, good. Food. It's a voiced. Of course, in saying these words, the tongue and lips are in continuous motion throughout the vowels. As we saw in the X-ray movie in demonstration. X-ray movie. X-ray movie mm -hmm. in demonstration 1.1 on the CD. The positions sh shown in the figure are best considered as the targets of the gestures for the vowel. All right, this is important too. Note the word targets. Does that mean that we absolutely attain that position every time with our tongue, every time we say that vowel? 一定会达到那个点吗? 那个画出来的那个高度, 一定会达到那个高度吗? 不会,这是你的目标,你的靶子,你在射靶,对不对?这是你的靶子,可是你不一定会达到. That's our target,这是一个理论的一个最标准的一个点,可是真的在发音的时候,可能会达不到。因为可能会 前九后面的音. Now look very carefully at this figure down here, figure 1.12. Um, as we mentioned, we're going to be using acoustics to describe vowels later on. Right now, we're just going to talk about the position of the tongue. So for each vowel, a different part of the tongue is highest. That's what we need for vowels. We have only a few minutes. We're not going to finish the chapter, unfortunately. We'll finish it definitely on Monday. I will try to get us up to super segmentals. That part is short, but it's really important. Let's just go on to page 20 now, and it says that in all the vowel gestures, the tongue tip is down behind the lower front teeth. So, the And the body of the tongue is domed upward, domed, And check it in your own pronunciation. So, let's just try these different vowels, everybody. Um, just repeat after me and feel what your tongue is doing. E, 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 Can you feel your tongue moving around? This is so yeah, write it down. Practice feeling where your tongue is and what it's doing for each of these vowels. Practice this. Because you need to be able to feel it. I know when I first started phonetics, consonants were no problem, but the vowels really had me puzzled. So you need to start practicing. Say the vowels, feel where your tongue is, which part of it is domed, what part of the vocal tract it's close to. Okay? Now we're going to divide the vowels into two types, front and back. This is really important. For the front vowels, those are the first four that we just repeated. E is the highest, high front, E. And then a little bit lower we have I, then middle, just that we would say a little bit below the middle is E, and the lowest is A. All of these are the front vowels. This is the in front vowels. Front vowels and back vowels, so you have to keep them straight. We usually keep going in a U shape. A is the most low, it's the lowest and most back vowel. A. Then we come up for U. But you notice in this diagram, E and U are both high vowels, right? But is U as high as E? Look at the top of 21. Kankan U is number 7. 
Is U as high as E? No, why not? Why not? E is very high. U is also a high vowel, but U is not nearly as high as E. It's closer to I, the gaudu, right? Right? Why is that? I think that's about all the time we're going to have. Uh, that's the only, the only thing we have time enough to explain is this. Why is the E so much higher than the U? That's not really the reason, but that's true. Back vowels tend to be rounded. It's very simple, actually. It's just a matter of Okay, This is the hinge of my jaw, right? Here's where I make E is up here, and here's where I make U back here. This is the jaw. I have room up here for an E. So that's why back vowels are going to be lower, even if we call them high. That is all the time we have for today. But we are absolutely going to finish next time. So for next time, review your assignments. What are they? Practice saying your vowels and feeling what your tongue and lips are doing. What else? Exercises for chapter one. We will mark them next time. Um, exercises, what else? Hai yu pinyin, learn it. Okay, it'll be fun actually, and then it will be very powerful because now you will know how to write Chinese and Latin letters. What else? The, the waveform, if you haven't done it yet. Anything else? Okay, make sure that you are up to date in your reading. And don't forget your notes. You need to hand those in every Monday. So I know it's a lot of stuff, but if you're doing it as you go along, it shouldn't be that heavy. Do we have any questions before we end? Any questions at all? Okay, if you think of something, please post an NTU phonetics. We, we really welcome your comments. I think it's getting really interesting. We'll see you there. Bye-bye.